This is how you can make a trigger system for your Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from any of the videos on my channel, you can get a super or god tier on YouTube or a god tier subscription on Discord. You can also get any of these bot packages. There is another one that is being repaired as of now. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. So we're going to start off by going to schemas and we're going to go ahead and create a trigger schema JS. It's going to need the guild, the phrase, the reply, and the block. So everything is going to be a string except for the block, which is going to be an array. So just go ahead and create this. If you don't have MongoDB set up, go ahead and watch the guide in the description below. After doing that, we can close out of that and we're going to go over to moderation and we can go ahead and create trigger.js. To start, we're going to go ahead and get a couple of things. The first is going to be everything that we need from the discord.js package. So it's going to be the slash command builder, the embed builder, the permission bit field, and the channel type. And then we're going to go ahead and get trigger from our trigger schema you can use autocomplete to get that. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and do module.exports and we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to get our data, which is going to be our new slash command builder. We're going to go ahead and set a name, which is going to be trigger. And we can go ahead and set a description and we can go ahead and say trigger system. That is not going to be shown because we're going to be using sub commands. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and add all of our sub commands. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste them and then walk you through each and every one of them. So we're going to go ahead and get four sub commands, the add, remove, the check, and the edit for the add we're going to go ahead and say a description of add a word or phrase and a trigger response and we're going to go ahead and add a string option which is going to be the phrase and we're going to say the phrase to reply to and that's going to be set to required we're going to add another string option which is going to be the reply which is going to be the response to that trigger phrase so basically this reply is going to be the response that's sent whenever somebody says that phrase that you put in first that can also be set required to true then we're going to add a remove which is going to be remove a trigger phrase phrase we're going to add a string option which is going to be the phrase again this time we're going to say the exact phrase to remove and we're going to go ahead and set required to true that's basically deleting that trigger phrase so that nobody can initialize a response when they send that phrase then we're going to go ahead and create a sub command which is check and the description is going to be check all of the trigger phrases and we do not need anything else for that the last one is going to be edit which is going to be the description of edit a trigger and we're going to go ahead and add a string option which is going to be the phrase and we're going to say the phrase to edit as our description and we're going to go ahead and set required to true on that and then we're going to go ahead and add a string option which is going to be new reply and we're going to go ahead and set a description to the new reply to the phrase and then we're also going to add a channel option which is going to be block channel and we're going to say block a channel from the trigger reply and those two do not have to be set to required the only one that has to be set to required is the first one which gets the phrase then after you do that you're going to add a comma at the end of it and you're going to come down here and we can say async executes we can go ahead and get our interaction and we can actually go ahead and open this up we're going to do a couple of things but first we're going to go ahead and get our function so we're going to go ahead and do async and we can get function and we can do send a message that is going to be our message. This function we pretty much make in every video. It makes everything a lot faster. So we're going to do const embed equals new embed builder. And we're going to go ahead and set a color that is going to be blurple. Then we're going to go ahead and set a description. And that's just going to be our message. And we can go ahead and do await interaction to reply. And we can go ahead and get our embeds, which is going to be our embed. And we're going to go ahead and set informal to true on that message. So now that we have our send message function, we're going to go ahead and make our permissions check. So it's going to be if no interaction dot member dot permissions dot has and we're going to go ahead and get our permissions bit field dot flags dot administrator and we can go ahead and return await send a message and we're just going to go ahead and get our caution emoji and we can go ahead and say you don't have perms to use this just like that so now that we've done that we're going to go ahead and get a couple of variables so we can do const we're going to go ahead and get our options and then we can set that equal to our interaction then we're going to go ahead and do const sub equals options dot get sub command now we're going to go ahead and get a couple more variables so we can go ahead and do var global data equals await trigger dot find and that is going to be our guild which can go ahead and be our interaction dot guild dot id then we're going to go ahead and do var data and we can do var phrase just like that now we're going to go ahead and switch to our sub command and we're going to go ahead and get our case which can be add and then we can come down here the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is get two variables it's going to be phrase equals options dot get string and we're going to get our phrase string and we're going to set it to two lowercase. Then we're going to go ahead and get const reply equals options that get string, which is going to be our reply string. So now that we have both of the variables from that sub command, we can also get our data variable. So we can come below that and we're going to do data equals await trigger.find1. 
That's going to be our interaction.guild.id as the guild, and the phrase is going to be phrase. Note that it is in lowercase form. We're going to save everything and interact with it as lowercase throughout this entire thing, so caps lock does not matter. Then we're going to go ahead and do if, and we can say data. We can go ahead and return await send message, and we're going to go ahead and get our caution emoji again, and we can just go ahead and say it looks like this phrase. We do backslash tick. We're going to get our phrase, and we can say is already a trigger here just like that then we're gonna go ahead and say else and we're gonna go ahead and actually create this in our schema so that we can interact with this later so we're gonna go ahead and do await trigger dot create we're gonna get our guild which is going to be our interaction dot guild that id we can get our phrase which is going to be our phrase variable note it is in two lowercase just so you know and we can go and get our reply which is going to be the reply to the trigger phrase and that's going to be our reply variable so now we can come down here and we're going to go ahead and use our send message function again. So we're going to do await send message and we can say I have added backslash take reply as a reply to all messages containing and then we can do backslash tick and we're going to get our phrase variable and then we can say feel free to block this reply in specific channels using slash trigger edit that's important to send in that because if a user does not want the trigger reply to be sent in a specific channel they can just go ahead and block that channel within the edit command all right so now we're going to go ahead and move on we can go ahead and break and we're going to get our case which is going to be remove and we can come down here we're going to do the exact same thing with our variables. We're going to go ahead and set the phrase variable equal to options.getString, which is going to be phrase, and that's going to be set to, to lowercase, so exactly what we did above. And we're going to set our data to the exact same thing as well. So pretty much the exact same two variables that we got above minus our reply. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to go ahead and say if no data, then we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to go ahead and return await send message. And we're going to go ahead and get a caution emoji. And we can go ahead and say it looks like, and then we can go ahead and get our phrase. We can do backslash tick is not an exact match to one of the phrase replies. Note that caps do not make a difference in finding the phrase to remove only spaces and characters do. So the reason we're making all of that is because it might not find the specific phrase if they are adding some random characters or spaces or whatever. They do have to get the exact same phrase. It just does not have to be in capital letters as they put it in before. So now we're going to go ahead and say else and we're going to go ahead and do two actions. The first is we're going to go ahead and do await trigger.delete one, which is going to be our guild as our interaction.guild.id. And then we can do our phrase, which is going to be our phrase. Then we're going to go ahead and send a message which is going to say i have deleted backslash take phrase from our trigger reply database nothing will be sent if this phrase is sent so we're basically deleting it and then we're just sending a confirmation message so now we can go ahead and break and we're going to go ahead and get our case which is going to be edit and we're going to come down here again this time we're going to get a couple more variables so we're going to get the phrase which is going to be options that get string and then we're going to get our phrase string to lowercase so the same thing as above we're going to get our data, which is also going to be the same thing above. But this time, we have two new variables, which is going to be new reply and block channel. They're going to be our options.getString, which is going to be new reply. And we're going to say or data.reply. So just in case they do not provide a new reply, then we just go ahead and edit in the exact same reply that was already being used. And then we're just going to go ahead and get our block channel. So now we're going to say if, and we can say no data. Then we can go ahead and return, await, send a message. And we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to get our caution emoji here. And this is actually going to be the exact same message that we had up here because pretty much it's going to be saying the exact same thing. It's going to be saying it could not find that phrase and it's going to give that information in there as well. So after we send that error message, then we can go ahead and say else and we're going to do var update and we can do if block channel. We can open this up. We're going to do update equals and we're going to go ahead and make an object. We can do money sign set and we're going to go ahead and get another object. We can get reply and that's going to be our new reply variable. Then we can do comma and we're going to go ahead and do push and we can go ahead and get our block in an object and we're going to go ahead and get a string which is going to be our block channel.id just like that. So then we're going to come down here and we're actually going to go ahead and say else and we're going to go ahead and copy this and this time we're just going to go ahead and remove the block. So it's just going to be money sign set to our new reply. So it's going to look exactly like this. All right. So now that we have our update in here. This is going to be updating the schema with all of the necessary information. We can go ahead and come outside of this 
and we're gonna go ahead and send both of our calls here. So we're gonna go ahead and use update one, and that's going to be our interaction.guild.id and our phrase, just like before, but this time we're gonna do a comma and we're gonna pass in the update variable. Then we can just go ahead and use our send message function to send a confirmation message saying this all worked. All right, so now we're gonna come outside of this and we're gonna go ahead and do break, and we're gonna go ahead and do case, which is going to be check. This is gonna be our final sub command, and then we're actually gonna go ahead and get into the handling of the trigger trigger replies. This is all basically just data handling. So yeah, in here, we're going to do if and we can go ahead and get our global data, then we can go ahead and open this up, we're going to do var information equals an empty array. And we're going to do await global data dot for each and we're going to do async value and we can open this up here, we're going to go ahead and do var blocked equals value dot block, we're going to go ahead and say if a block dot length is equal to zero, then we can go ahead and do blocked equals and we can say no blocked channels and we're going to go ahead and say else and we're going to do blocked equals value dot block dot join and we're going to go ahead and join it with a comma and a space just like that, then we're going to go ahead and say information dot push and we're going to go ahead and get a string this is actually quite a complicated string so just bear with me here we're basically going to go ahead and bold trigger phrase and we're going to say in lowercase format and we're going to do backslash tick and we can do value dot phrase and then we're going to do a backslash n so we space it out and we're going to bold reply phrase and we're going to do in the backslash ticks we're going to get our value dot reply and we're going to do another backslash n to make it a line down we're going to get bolded block channels we're going to go ahead and do backslash take backslash take inside of that we're going to get our blocked variable and then we're going to do backslash n backslash n so that there's two spaces in case there's multiple trigger replies then we're going to go ahead and send this so we can do a wait send a message and we're going to go ahead and get our globe emoji in here we're going to go ahead and say your trigger phrases and corresponding data and we're going to bold that and we can do backslash n backslash n and we're going to go ahead and get our information dot join and we're going to go ahead and join that with a backslash n just like that. So now we're actually done with all of this. So we're going to go ahead and create another file. We're going to go over to events and we can go ahead and create trigger.js. In here, we're going to go ahead and say const trigger equals require and we're going to go ahead and get dot slash. We can get schemas and that's going to be our trigger schema. Then we're going to go ahead and do module.exports here and we're going to go ahead and get our name, which is going to be message create. We can go ahead and do async execute. We can get our message and we can actually go ahead and open this up. So we've We've gone ahead and created our message create event. So the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to say if message author bot or we can go ahead and say no message guild. Then we're just going to go ahead and return and do nothing. Basically, if the person sending this trigger phrase is a bot or it's in the DMs, we're just going to go ahead and return and not do anything because this is 100% reliant on it being a user and it being a guild that the message is sent in. Now we're going to go ahead and do const data equals await trigger.find and we can go ahead and get our guild, which is going to be our message.guild.id this time. And then we're going to go ahead and do await data for each and we can go ahead and do async value. We're going to go ahead and open this up here. So we're going to go ahead and start off by saying, if and we can do message dot content dot to lowercase and then we can go ahead and do dot includes our value dot phrase now note we went ahead and set our message content to two lowercase and the value dot phrase is already into lowercase format because that's the order in which we saved the content to actually reply to so now that they're both in lowercase format we can actually properly compare them in this logical statement so if this is actually true and it returns true then we can actually go ahead and open this up in here, we're going to go ahead and say var blocked, and we can do await value dot block dot for each, and we're going to go ahead and do async channel this time, and we can open this up. So right now, we have established that our message does contain our trigger phrase, so now we're going to go ahead and check to see if the channel that this message is sent in is blocked. So in here, we're going to go ahead and say if channel equals our message dot channel dot ID, then we're going to go ahead and set blocked to true just like that and then we're going to come outside of that and we're going to go in and say if a blocked then we can just go ahead and return and we can say else and we can do await a message dot reply and we're going to go ahead and do value dot reply just like that here all right so after we do all of this we are actually done with this entire system so just go ahead and save the files restart the bot and we can actually go ahead and test this out all right so over in the discord server we can actually go ahead and test this out so i'm going to go ahead and get our trigger and we're just going to go ahead and check now as you can see it's going to say your trigger phrases and corresponding data now there is nothing so it's going to give me nothing if you wanted to you could actually go ahead and handle that and just reply with there is no data but i'm not going to do that it does technically work so we can just leave that as is 
So we're going to go ahead and do trigger and we're going to add a phrase. Let's just go ahead and say hello. And we're going to reply with hello back and we can just do a wave emoji or something like that. So we can go ahead and send that. So now it's saved. And if we go ahead and run our trigger check again, this time, as you can see, we have our data. So we have trigger phrase, which is hello. We have our reply, which is hello and a wave emoji. And then it is not blocked within any channels. So let's just go ahead and say hello. And as you can see, we get our trigger reply just like that. And if we were to string it within a message, just like that, it's also going to reply. And I believe if we string it within a message and no spaces, it should also reply as well. So it's pretty specific. You can actually go ahead and change that if you want to, but uh, I think it works pretty well like that. So now let's go ahead and do trigger edits. And we're going to go ahead and get our phrase, which is going to be hello. And we're going to leave the reply. Actually, we can change the reply. This time we'll do hello and we'll get an actual wave emoji that will work. And the block channels, let's just go ahead and block it in this channel. So now that we've made that change, we can actually go ahead and do our check command. And as you can see, this time it is a different reply and we do have a blocked channel. So if we were to do hello in here, as you can see, nothing's going to happen because this is the channel that is blocked in. So if we were to go over to a different channel and we were to go ahead and say hello in here, as you can see, we're going to get a reply and it's going to be the updated reply. All right, so I guess all that's left to do is just remove it so we can do trigger phrase. And this time, let's just go ahead and put in something that technically does not exist within our database. If we send it, as you can see, it's not an exact match and it's going to give us our error message. So this time we can actually go ahead and remove it. So we're going to go ahead and put in hello. And now it's removed from the database. So if we were to go ahead and do trigger check, as you can see, we have no more data. Now, one thing that I didn't test out, but it does actually work is if I were to do hello and capitalize it or do like hello or something like that, we could do hello just like that. Technically, it's going to reply to all of these because caps lock does not matter. That's just something that I thought I would point out. All right, so that's how you can make an advanced trigger system using your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.